This is a tutorial on how to use one of the most popular calculators on the ideasfordeckdesigns.com site, and that is the footings calculator. So as you know, you go to the calculator at the top of the nav bar here and click on footings. This will take you to the deck load calculator. Now, one concept you need to know before you begin this, a lot of people don't understand this. Maybe you're advanced, you do. I apologize if you already know this, but it bears repeating for those who are new to this topic. One of the terms you're going to hear a lot, and it's very important, is a tributary area. Now, what that is, is uh, sort of an invisible zone or a series of zones on the surface of your deck. And in any given tributary area, the load uh, that, is, that, that, that is imposed on the deck um, in that tributary area will, will go down to one of the footings. So... Uh, all of the footings will, will bear the entire weight imposed on that deck. And um, it's just a question of, uh, of, of, of what uh, area of the deck uh, do the forces originate from that go to any particular footing. So if you've never done this before, it is a kind of finicky thing because you have to, you have to look at the spacings between all the beams, um, the overhangs, the, the, the distance between the support posts under, underneath each beam in order to figure out uh, how that works. So this calculator does that for you, makes it really easy. So we'll just carry through here and, and uh, show you how it's done. <clears throat> to start, we're going to use a freestanding deck. We're going to use a bearing capacity of uh, 2,000 pounds, which is fairly common. Now, I do ha suggest that you click on this link here. It's the uh, help it's the help link for soil bearing capacity because not all soil has the same bearing capacity. When you get into clay, like and particularly really bad clays like a compressive clay uh, that can uh, that absorbs water and and expands in in size or that shrinks when it dries out, that kind of soil is pretty much the worst case scenario. And that's generally going to be around 1,500 pounds per square foot. Now, I, I suppose it could be worse than that um, if you had biomass and material, but no one should ever be building on a, on a soil that has biomass in there. because that, That's stuff like you know wood or things that are, are like rotting. Because once they rot, they create a, 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 they just disappear and the whole soil compresses further down. So um, here's a couple of tests that you should consider if, it, if you are dealing with clay. One is the dirt ball test. The other is the water test and the noodle test. Very self-explanatory, and that will give you a really good idea of the kind of soil you're working with. Otherwise, if it's sandy, clay uh, mix and gravelly mix, 2,000 PSF is safe. Sand gravel or gravel only 3,000 PSF is safe. And, of course, the rocks uh, are much, you know, much, much, uh, bedrock is much, much stronger. So that's what you need to know. Any doubts whatsoever, I highly recommend you speak to someone in your building department or uh, a geotechnical engineer who knows your area. So that's all that I'm going to say about uh, soil bearing capacity. Now, draw your deck out on a piece of graph paper and start inputting information. Here, I'm going to use three beams. And this is going to be for a deck that's three, uh, 12 by 22. And I'm going to use uh, the number of support posts is going to be four. The design load is 50, and I'm use, going to use a, a rectangular footing. Now the design load, this is what all decks have to be at a minimum. You might want to increase that and see how that affects the outcomes of your calculations. We move on to step number two. Okay, now here's the tricky part where we're going to tell the calculator what the spacings are between each support post and between each beam. <clears throat> between each support post, I'm going to space this at six feet apart. And because there's three beams, um, I'm going to space this each beam four feet apart and that means that I'm going to have um, an overhang of two feet from the last beam to the edge of the deck and I'm going to have a two foot overhang from the first and last support post to the side of the deck. Okay. Based on that, and I know I'm going to have a 12 inch by 12 inch or 1 foot by 1 foot uh, square footing. 
And okay, I'm going to calculate now. And it's going to lay this out on a graph format. Here's a visual. Here's your house. And it, and it extends 12 feet out from the house. And it's 22 feet wide. And you can see we've got three beams here. We've got all the, um, all the uh, uh, footings represented in gray. And each, it's been divided into tributary zones based on the shading here. You've got light brown and dark brown, so forth. And each each zone is labeled A1, A2, A3, all the way to C4. So that's very helpful. The other thing you need you, you, you should try is take your mouse and let it hover over one of these tributary areas. And you're going to see the loads come up. See, the load per tributary area A1 is 1,000 pounds per square foot. And we know that the soil can withstand 2,000 pounds per square foot. So that zone is excellent. You've got a safety factor of 200%. Let's move it along here. Okay, not quite a uh, 200% safety factor, but it's only 1,200 pounds per square foot and it can handle 2,000. So you've got probably a you know, 1.7 to 1.8 uh, times safety factor. And you can do this for every single tributary area just to see which ones are the, are the danger zones. And um, everything checks out here fine, perfectly. So uh, you could then go and, 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 and print this. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to first show you uh, what happens if if there's an error. Uh, I'm going to really drop this down here to a thousand pounds. Really bad soil conditions, and I'm going to recalculate. Now you see all of these inner areas, which have larger tributary areas, are in trouble. The, the red, <clears throat> 1,200 uh, pounds per square foot, and it's greater than what the soil will bear, a thousand pounds per square foot. And it's the same thing here. So in order to fix this, there's a couple things you could do. You could add another beam. So instead of three beams, you're going to have four. Or you could try staying with three beams, but adding another footing for every beam. So you'd have five footings per beam. And then recalculate and see what happens. Okay, but it also tells you here what the error message is. So um, that's that's also good. You can do a lot of things with this, just playing around and seeing how it how it uh, uh, affects your outcome. So now that's that, that's basically uh, you're, you're good to go. You're able to work with this in your, your plans. You can also print this. And I'm going to move this over for you so you can see it. Get it right in the zone there. Okay. Again, these are printed and formatted uh, for your printer. 8.5 by 11 inch sheets of paper and it's really nice it shows it very clearly it's a great piece of paper to write out and have in your plans submit with your building application whatever the case may be it also breaks down all the tributary areas here you can see on the left A1 A4 all the way down to C4 tells you everything you need to know okay and um, it's just it's just a great little application go back to the main page again Get this in here. Okay, so I highly recommend you uh, you use this, especially if you're planning something like a spa uh, and you've added, uh, you know, you've increased the uh, uh, the weight that you want to put on this deck, or if you have you're unsure of the uh, soil bearing capacity. Great little calculator. Uh, have fun with it, and uh, thanks for stopping by at IdeasForDeckDesigns.com. If there's anything. I can do to improve this calc any of these calculators or make the site more uh, intuitive, please contact me. I read every one of your emails. I really appreciate it. And uh, good luck with your building project. And thanks for visiting ideasfordeckdesigns.com.